In the current era, economic growth of any country relies very heavily on digital platforms. And the fundamental requirement for any digital economy is connectivity. It has been broadly estimated that a 10% increase in broadband penetration in any country could potentially lead to over a percentage of increase in its GDP. So there is an explosion in network demand in India. This is driven by heightened user expectations as they become increasingly data savvy and mobile. Users want to consume high definition content, whether it is the video or applications, um, when and where they choose to. So these demands will only intensify with India's move into 5G. And the new applications and use cases, 5G makes it possible. India's government has kick-started the 5G trials by requesting applications for the Spectrum trials. Uh, so this government is expected to auction Spectrum, um, including the 5G airwaves, pretty soon. Uh, we may see up to 400 megahertz of airwaves allocated for this. And all of this, we have just begun. The combination of 4G, Wi-Fi and 5G should deliver reliable, fast broadband connectivity almost everywhere and any time. Some use cases to boost India's economy and digital penetration um, could very well be in the areas of healthcare, security, education, gaming, etc. However, we have an opportunity here to address the social inequality in India with the technology such as 5G in the areas of, let's say, farming or waste management, etc. Now, for the healthcare, uh, the use of tactile internet, which combines ultra low latency with extreme high availability, reliability, and security, will be a huge boon with sufficiently responsive connectivity and an ultra low latency. A physician could even be able to command a tele-robot at the patient's location, allowing remote physical examination with full audiovisual and, and haptic feedback. The second example uh, is around education, let's say. Already popular with some of the gamers, virtual and artificial, uh, virtual and augmented reality, they call it AR, VR, uh, these headsets could be used for education and training purposes. Lastly, on farming. Um, with 5G, farmers will be able to boost yields um, and the crop quality by monitoring soil and, and weather conditions um, using sensors um, to tailor the use of pesticides and fertilizers. So all of these use cases uh, will clearly require investments in connectivity. Uh, and according to GSMA, uh, meeting 5G's potential in India will require substantial investments in digital infrastructure. Over the next few years, we'll see India's communication service providers um, or telcos, they make major investments in upgrading their networks. Um, in upgrading for 5G, Indian networks will need to be very agile, flexible, intelligent, programmable, and above all, adaptive. I mean, we're talking about adaptive networks here. With highly complex 5G networks being built, Network automation is no longer a choice for anyone, you know, but almost an imperative. Why? Because there is no way these complex networks can be managed uh, without a high degree of automation using available advanced software uh, capabilities across the entire network. First, the cost effectiveness in 5G ready networks. Um, service providers will need to uh, provision bandwidth dynamically across this wireline network to optimize resources. Service providers can achieve this with advanced software applications um, and real-time measurements. Now the second reason is around quality of service. With 5G service providers, will need to customize quality of service to each use case they offer to their customers. So now this can be done using software to program this differentiation within their networks. Third, for optimizing network and 5G service performance. Service providers will need data analytics. They can use software to uh, you know, really visualize data 
uh, and analyze um, you know, network traffic flows to maximize network performance. With virtual network functions, VNF, and software-defined networking, service providers can increase openness without relying on any one single proprietary technology or a provider. Five G is not about the wireless radio. Uh, well, I should say five G is not about just the wireless radio. The true five G user experience will emanate out of an end-to-end -end network upgrade, um, covering all of it: front hall, mid hall, and back hall wireline networks. CNR's five G network solutions are very open and modular in design, so operators can evolve as needed depending on their business demands. CNR's expertise and extensive experience in delivering industry-leading wireline networks and intelligent automation allow mobile network operators so to, to more easily scale their existing 4G networks. So this way, they can leverage a common network infrastructure to easily transition to a high-performance 5G network with very minimal risks and ability to realize a faster return on investment which is what is required in today's world. 5G applications are driving the need for more IP uh, towards the network edge. So CNS Adaptive IP, as we call it, is designed to enable this by offering a very rich portfolio of purpose-built platforms. This is supported by an agile and targeted set of open IP protocols. So together with uh, multi-vendor, multi-layer automation and analytics, Adaptive IP also provides end-to-end -end visualization and path computation, making it very simple and, and, and much more cost-effective to manage and optimize your IP networks. And CNS IP, uh, Adaptive IP easily supports concepts such as network slicing, uh, virtualization, and edge computing that will be at the forefront of any successful 5G deployment ever. Right? So, in summary, although 5G provides great opportunity for India's economy and society, uh, there are gaps to close um, from where we are today to where we're going to be with 5G. As we discussed, beyond wireless improvements, automation, and wireline infrastructure will have to be uh, looked into essentially.